Thanks for joining this uh, video on uh, uh, some of our customers that are deploying WebLogic Server. My name is Mike Lehman. I run uh, what's called Cloud Application Foundation, WebLogic Server, Coherence, and Java EE product management. And I'm joined here today by Oscar from EGIA, -E, um, a, a government organization in Bass. We're going to be talking about your deployment of WebLogic Server and uh, how you guys are using it. So. Maybe to help folks understand uh, sort of what uh, EGIE is all about, uh, maybe you could first describe okay. it and then okay. a bit of what your role is in, in, in the organization. Okay. Uh, we work in a small, okay, small medium-sized company and we, we are expert offering services to the Basque country. So we, instead of, okay, my role there is senior architect. And so we got, I got the skills in the networking, in the storage area, um, and much more in the application server area. So our principal aim is to offer the IT services to the government. And in this case, we, we, we begin in the desktop and we go on through networking to arrive the server. Oh, so okay. nowadays, our portfolio goes in the Java direction and in the NetJet direction. And in Java direction, we are focused in with web logic applications. Oh, okay. And so, um, uh, what version of? Uh, I think you're using quite a number of versions, like a lot of our customers <laughs> of web logic service. So, what yeah. what are you? What's your range that you've got? Sure. Uh, nowadays, now it's, it's difficult to go on with versioning because you have to take into account that we are not a global business company. So. We are offering services to, to 13 different departments in the government, so okay. they are not uh, really big. There are some of them which are bigger, but in most cases we got small to medium sized applications. So we got mainly applications in WebLogic 8, yeah. we could say maybe 90% and more or less. Okay. And we got uh, other core applications in WebLogic 11. And those applications are much uh, quicker moving from um, version 8, 9, to 10, to 11. We see a lot of our customers who are uh, spread across many releases and obviously with the modern release like 11G or 12C you tend to see the smaller, lighter weight applications being developed and deployed on them. What what sort of drove you to choose WebLogic Server in your environment? Was there sort of a, a background yeah, okay. behind your decision making? Okay, we are well known just uh, customers with WebLogic because we began, uh, and, and remember maybe 10 years ago, we began ago. When, with Tenga product and we started using WebLogic 4 in the beginning and wow, we'll go okay. on with the global deployment in yep. WebLogic 5. And so we decided to, to go on with WebLogic because on that day, the, the principal aim for us was to be able to offer uh, a good platform for internet applications. And so we decided to go on the Java Enterprise Application Server, and on that moment, the, the best one was WebLogic. Yeah, okay. And um, now, now that you're a mature WebLogic shop, and uh, uh, moving to some of the later releases, um, what's the? Can you tell me a bit about the applications that you're deploying? Are they sort of web-based? Okay. Are they messaging-based? Are they SOA-based? Mm -hmm. What's the style that you typically see? Our business mainly is to try to offer the best service to, to the citizenship. So we got mainly web applications for citizenships. We got on the other hand some core common services, for example, I'm really close to a project called Platea Integration, okay. who mix uh, more or less services, events, and file services for all the companies. So we got all kind of uh, yeah, applications anyway. We got also really small applications used in the, in the intranet, but yeah, more or less this is the, the web idea where we move and nowadays with JMS we're really proud. Ah, okay. So what's uh, what are you doing with the JMS area with the messaging? Six years ago there was a really big project uh, began called EcoGovernment. So EcoGovernment? Eco, yeah, e okay. Eco government, yeah. And there was a project who managed or tried to to supply uh, proceeding in the web for the citizenship and Okay, 
there appeared also a document management of common service and on behind of all of them there was a uh, integration common services offering so in more concrete in the event service of data integration we are using uh, weblogic jms as a publish a subscribe okay. pattern implemented and instead of going uh, each time defining and creating applications we got a general configure a database configure mm -hmm. Uh, broker light or something like that. We're really it's quite good. Hmm. Okay. Um, and so is it a file based persistence or database persistence then? We, we're using database persistence oh, okay. yeah, yeah, because um, nowadays we got two different data centers and so for us when we have to move the service from one data center to the other data center it's much better to use uh -huh. the database as the connection between of them. Okay. Yeah, that's a very common usage of the uh, database uh, persistence option. Yeah, we're using uh, active passive, so it's much better to, to have the information there. And we got uh, cabin replication technology, so. And then, so even though uh, you say that you're uh, small or medium yeah, sized, small, really. but, <laughs> but uh, it sounds like you have a fair number of uh, WebLogic domains between servicing 13 different departments and obviously a multi-data center uh, environment as well. Um, how are you managing the environment? Are you using uh, WST? Have you got some other management tools? Uh, people are often interested in the kind of tooling that you, okay, we yeah. see in these environments. We began using Nahios and BMC tools but in the end, nowadays, we are using uh, LST scripting, okay. at least to be able to know if they are up and running and they are, yeah. as I, we would like, uh, offering service. And nowadays, we are using the uh, web login console, and on the other hand, to the open agents, uh, AD, we are using scripting to test them. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's a... Uh we see that as, I mean, obviously WebLogic supports lots of third-party monitoring environments. We have uh, uh, Enterprise Manager as well, and then a lot of people just completely automate it with, uh, with, with WST and, and sort of the tools that come out of the box. I'm curious uh, the kinds of investment that um, you're going as you go forward. What are the areas that uh, the Basque Country uh, departments want? Are they even building new styles of applications? What are you doing? I think we have to improve something in automation area. So nowadays we are involved in those key, uh, these big uh, goals. And this is the goal for us uh, for this year. And apart from that, we got also in mind the possibility to be able to move our application, for example, to the cloud. Okay. You have to take into account that uh, our applications and services are not all the year consuming service. Okay. Okay. For example, we are not Amadeus, we are not selling nothing, so we got different weights. Your, your, like peaks, here, your, your peaks, peaks are yeah. different depending yeah, yeah. on the time of year. Yeah, in the time of the year. So we would like to be able to be more elastic okay. in those uh, periods of time without having to um, struggle uh, too much with the configuration. Okay. So the idea is being able to say, okay, we are going to be a couple of weeks working with, uh, I don't know what kind of application, so please, instead of having uh, two pairs of yeah. instances in the cluster, please uh, give me four, four or five, well, five sounds strange, but maybe yeah. four or eight instances. Yeah. This is more daily uh, or be more elastic in our case. Your typical cluster size, is there, are you typically in pairs or is it a four node uh, cluster? What's your domain size typically? Okay, nowadays we got two to four um, yeah, domain instances cluster. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and we got replicated in every environment, at least in every environment, environment we got uh, clusters because in the past we discovered that sometimes there are some small things to take into account to yeah. work in a cluster because if you start developing in development environment without the cluster and you go to the testing and production environment with college, without this taking into account, you might encounter some problems with the serialization, okay, I'm going back, uh, objects to the session, this kind of stuff. Okay, so just sort of having consistency in that environment. Yeah. I think the biggest one is was eight, eight, eight nodes in the cluster. Yeah. Right, okay. No more. And um, I guess uh, it sounds like you've got some applications deployed on 11G. Yeah. Um, 
Can you describe them? I know 11G is quite different from 8 in terms of its functionality. What what was uh, what drove you to 11G? Okay, uh, in 11G we got some core common services like, for example, all the blood, uh, integration service I talked before. Um, the, the unique improvement was related to to coherent cache. Yes. So I think it was maybe ten point three. I think. Ten ten three four is when the coherence yeah, yeah, cache okay. came into the okay. service bus. I think. Um, so Oscar, uh, it's uh, one of the areas we talked about is uh, coherence. Uh, so you are using Web Logic, but you've also got an investment in coherence. Could you tell us about the Web Logic and coherence work that you're doing? Nowadays, we we are using coherence in different areas. For example, in the protection environment, we got a security provider mm, homemade. So. All the credentials, instead of going directly to the LDAP and pro having to to check all the authorizations, we what we do is to cache this information in the in the in coherence, and so each click that goes to to the server itself doesn't have to 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 do this kind of checking. Apart from that, nowadays we we are using uh, a homemade framework for the to develop applications and we got something like a sharing information area based on the database and so after doing some tests we, we, we found that the uh, tests we got bottlenecks and nowadays we are in a box to trying to to change this behavior and instead of storing information in the database we're trying to store it in, in coherence in a replication model so we are really interested in the coherence product. So we've talked a bit about the future, we talked about what you're running. Um, I guess, have you overall, maybe we could close out with, uh, you know, what's your impression uh, using WebLogic Server? Has it met your expectations and uh, sort of, you know, where do you think you'll be going with it uh, going forward? In my opinion, I think the technology is really good. The, the people behind it is also really good. And uh, what I hope is that the cloud vision could uh, be given inside the, the product. I would like to something like cloud defying, okay? Yep. So I would like to be able to say, okay, this is my web app. Please uh, go the cluster from two nodes to four, from yep. to four nodes. And I, okay, I'm always telling our, uh, talking about the same, how messaging as a service could be implemented. Uh, Oscar, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to tell us about your WebLogic deployment and uh, we look forward to uh, probably seeing it uh, as it evolves going forward because clearly you're working uh, with the product in a great way. Thank you, it was a pleasure.